In this video, you'll see how to set up networking in AWS Control Tower. With this alternative to VPC peering, you can simplify and scale private communication between VPCs in your network by using a shared transit gateway, reducing the effort and costs of provisioning individual NAT gateways and private VPC endpoints in your accounts. As the number of accounts in your Control Tower environment grows, managing incremental VPC connections with separate network gateways can become complex and costly. Using AWS Transit Gateway, you can route all traffic from spoke VPCs through a central egress VPC in your network services account. Traffic between an Amazon VPC and Transit Gateway remains on the AWS Global Private Network and is not exposed to the public internet. For the purposes of this example, some prerequisites have already been configured in our AWS organization's management account. Let's go to Control Tower to see the account factory settings. The provisioning of public subnets is disabled. All regions in the Regions for VPC creation list are deselected so that we can add a more complicated VPC pattern to our accounts. Next, let's go to Resource Access Manager. Here, we have enabled resource sharing with AWS organizations. For demonstration purposes, we already have an infrastructure OU that contains a network account and is registered with Control Tower. Let's switch to the network account now. Here, we have a common VPC pattern that we can share with our organization's accounts. Let's take a look. Our VPC includes four subnets, two public and two private, with non-overlapping IPv4 CIDR blocks, spanning two availability zones. We have also created route tables for each of our four subnets. Let's take a quick look at our public and private designated routes. The route tables for the private subnets send traffic to corresponding NAT gateways. The route tables for the public subnets send incoming traffic to an Internet Gateway. Here's the Internet Gateway associated with the VPC. There are also two NAT gateways, both provisioned inside the public subnets. Now that we've got the VPC architecture configured in our network account, we want all egress to flow through it. To do this, we'll create a transit gateway. We'll give the gateway a name and enable shared attachments leaving all the other settings as default. Now that the transit gateway is available, we'll attach our network VPC to it. We'll designate the transit gateway we created as the host of our attachment. Next, we'll provide a name and then designate our VPC. We want only our private subnets to be associated with this transit gateway attachment. Now that the attachment is available, let's return to AWS Resource Access Manager to share the transit gateway with our organization. To do this, we'll create a resource share. We'll give our resource share a name and specify the transit gateway as the resource to add. We'll retain the default transit gateway sharing permissions, which allow other accounts to read, create, modify, and delete attachments. Next, we'll choose the principles that are allowed to access this resource share. For our purposes, we'll allow only accounts within our organization to access the transit gateway. We'll grant access to our entire organization. Next, we'll review the settings and create the resource share. The resource share is now active. Let's take a look at our shared resources. This screen shows the resource, the last share date, and the number of shares and principles. Here you can see the principal account we designated. Next, we'll switch to our workload account to create a basic VPC that can communicate using the shared transit gateway. We'll give the workload VPC a CIDR block that won't overlap with any other CIDR block that will be attached to the transit gateway. Let's leave the rest of the default settings as is. Next, we'll create two public and two private subnets, as in the central network account, within non-overlapping CIDR blocks of the VPC. 
For each subnet, let's specify the VPC we just created. Next, for each subnet, we'll provide a name, an availability zone, and a non overlapping IPv4 CIDR block. We'll need to do this for each of the four subnets we create. Let's skip ahead. We have now created the four subnets for our VPC. Instead of routing the private subnets to a NAT gateway, as we did with the central VPC account, we'll route them to the shared transit gateway. First, let's create a route table for each subnet. Let's skip ahead to after we've created all four route tables. Next, we need to verify that the transit gateway from the network account has been shared with the workload account, so that we can create a transit gateway attachment for it. The transit gateway from the network account is visible in the workloads account. We can tell from the owner ID field that this transit gateway was shared from another account. In the Sharing tab, we can see the ARN of the resource share and the date shared. Now let's create a transit gateway attachment for the workloads account, so we can route its subnets to the network account's transit gateway. We'll specify the transit gateway ID that was shared with us and the workload account ID for the VPC to be attached. Then we'll choose the two private subnets to associate them with the attachment. Now that the attachment is available, we're ready to assign the central transit gateway to our private subnet route tables. We'll set all outgoing traffic to route to the transit gateway. We will then repeat the process for the other private subnet's route table. Let's skip ahead to after this is done. We can verify a subnet's route assignment in the Routes tab. We have now enabled communication from resources in the workload account to the central VPC through the shared transit gateway. To verify this, we'll switch back to the network account. Let's see how the transit gateway route propagation has changed as a result of modifying our workload account attachments. Notice that the transit gateway attachment created by the workload account now appears in the network account as well. We should also expect that the attachment created in the workload account has modified the route propagation in the route table. As you can see, there are two attachments in the network account's central transit gateway route table. You've just seen how to set up networking in AWS Control Tower. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.